Hello beautiful friends, this is Erica with Crystal Rose Insights and Conscious Alchemy 1111 here to do a special video about the distorted feminine. If you haven't seen the video I've done about the distorted masculine, please do go check it out. Um, it is up on my channel. So today's topic is going to be the distorted feminine. How does feminine energy show up in that form? Um, how to recognize it, what are the traits of someone who's living from a distorted feminine energy. Um, if you haven't seen the video that I did around how the feminine helps to heal the masculine, or how feminine energy helps to heal the masculine, um, it is on my channel. It, uh, just search like how the feminine heals the masculine. Um, I do a long intro there about the energies, so if it's, you know, rather than repeat it here, um, do go check that out uh, for some more information, but just really quickly, what that video, um, uh, there's a spectrum of energy when it comes to masculine energy and feminine energy. We all have both masculine and feminine energies within us, and um, we have, in the awakening process, we have the opportunity to start to embody the end of the spectrum that relates to the sacred feminine or the sacred masculine or the divine masculine or the divine feminine. At the other end of the spectrum is the distortion of that energy. So how does it show up when it's in the negative or it's in and it's not in balance? Um, this end of the spectrum here is more what's the ideal, what's the ideal embodiment of masculine energy or feminine energy. So um, in the masculine energy video, we talked about really it's it's how we've gotten here where we are now culturally, um, socially, just as a consciousness, as a as a as a planet is because we've been living in distorted masculine energy for a long time. So there's a reason that we keep hearing things like the rise of the feminine, the rise of the feminine, and it's about the rise of the feminine energy. So um, part of understanding uh, divine feminine and divine masculine energy or sacred masculine, sacred feminine is understanding what it is not and how it can show up when it's not living in its embodiment. So, um, a lot of feminines are living in the distorted feminine energy, just like a lot of masculines have been living in distorted masculine energy. And um, more and more souls are awakening to truly their divinity, which is within them. And that is helping raise the consciousness of everybody. So the more people understand how to recognize distorted feminine, distorted masculine energy in their lives, then they can more understand where to go in the direction of the, the divine end of the spectrum. So with that, um, I'm going to, I have certainly, I could certainly just sit here and talk and teach, but I, I like to use cards and I also, because I also want spirit to guide the conversation here. Um, I, yes, Erica, I have some things I'd love to teach about this and what I know about it, but I really want to let spirit guide the conversation because they know who's going to be watching this or who is watching this or who's going to be watching this in the future. So um, I kind of step myself aside and let spirit guide the conversation. And you never know really where it's going to go. But my intention today is to share about the distorted feminine energy, how it shows up, and also why the masculine and, and, and the masculine energy on its way to being the sacred masculine will often have to clear and heal patterns relating to um, distorted feminines. Now, this could be uh, love relationships. This could be parent-parental relationships. This could be sibling relationships. This could be um, friends. So um, part of the awakening process and the embodiment of the divine end of the spectrum is usually healing through the imbalance or the, um, you know, interactions with, people that are not living in the sacred form of their energy. Now, again, a lot of you guys are new to my channel here and you may not understand this, but just so you know, when I say masculine and feminine energy, that does not mean gender. It means solely an energetic principle. We have masculine and feminine energies within us. I'll probably do some, I'll definitely do some other videos going more in depth on that, but um, you could be any gender and be a, a masculine or be more primarily feminine. We all have one primary, not all, most people have one primary energy in terms of like their core being. Um, there are some people that are just naturally more balanced in terms of their kind of, you know, they're more mixed. 
Um, but in general, you have one primary. And there are times, for example, I'm a, I'm a, div, I'm a feminine and I happen to be female as well, but, um, there are times where I need to be in my masculine energy. Um, that is in the work environment. That is when I have a, a battle to fight and when I have, um, you know, things I have to get done, I get more into my masculine energy. So there are, you know, part of the awakening is understanding the difference in the energies and how we, we do embody both, but we are primarily one. So let's just get started and see what, where spirit wants to go with the conversation relating to um, just what do we need to know about the distorted feminine? I'm just going to pull a couple cards here. And then for those of you that are going to want to get more in depth on this, I am going to be doing an extended video um, later where we're going to get more into guidance around this. But this is this first video is going to be more about um, identifying it, how it works and all that. So I'm just going to pull some cards here. Okay. So, interesting that this comes up. This is door to value. And it's this is um, a card about abundance. This is about money. And um, what's right next to it? This is so wild. I just, I just love how Spirit does this. Um, it's coming in the Rest and Rejuvenation card in the reverse. So what I'm feeling right away here is this energy, this is around somebody, um, a lot of the distorted feminines, like I started this video saying, are interacting with masculines that are not in their sacred embodiment, right? They're in their, likely their distorted masculine energy. And we've been conditioned to be in distorted masculine. It's not their fault. It's not like... It's just the way they've been raised. Oftentimes it can be from a break in childhood, but right here, this is a, this is an emphasis a lot on status and money relating to a masculine who is go, 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 like creating, um, their empire, doing what they're doing, being very focused on being competitive and someone, cause the distorted masculine does not take time to rest. Uh, this actually came up in the Distorted Masculines video, by the way. So um, it's like they are looking, it's like they kind of seek, they seek power. And when I say power, distorted power, the distorted idea of power, which is because um, the divine masculine, the sacred masculine is very powerful, but it's a different energy. Okay. So right away they're coming in with the energy around distorted feminine will likely be looking for um, safety, stability, um, uh, like stability, like they, they're more, it's less about a heart connection and more about can the person provide a life for me? Uh, because a distorted feminine is dare I say it, powerless. She's been conditioned that she is powerless. She has been conditioned by the distorted masculine energy that she is powerless. And um, so she seeks somebody to take care of her. Now, again, this is very generally speaking. I'm speaking energetically. There are plenty of the, uh, dis feminine energies that are living on the distorted end of the spectrum that are, you know, can make money for themselves and all of that. But, um, this is what's they're wanting to bring up. And again, there are always exceptions. This is generally speaking. So this is really about, um, seeking, uh, material comfort over emotional comfort, emotional stability, emotional connection. And let's see what else they want to bring in. Because again, And then they're bringing something to me right now, which is a, a, a little bit of an aside where like there are a lot of feminines that have had to be in their masculine energy. So the feminines 
people who are feminine at their core that are needing to be in their masculine energy are the the females that are very um, driven. They're very competitive. They're very um, focused on career, taking care of themselves so that they could be a feminine at their core, but they're in their masculine. That's different than a distorted feminine. So they wanted to bring that in as a clarification. So the distorted feminine energy, like if she's in her feminine, distorted feminine energy, not, at, not, not, a, not being in her masculine energy, she's seeking stability over emotional connection. That's why a lot of distorted feminine, um, people who are living in the distorted feminine energy can often be in codependent relationships. Uh, powerless, feeling unworthy, feeling like they can't take care of themselves. A lot of distorted feminine is about acting weak. Um, like using that weakness as a manipulation for the distorted masculine. Um, okay, I'm just gonna pull another card and see what else. There's so much about this. So how else does it show up? It's um, it can be orally dramatic about things. Um, not looking at the big picture. It can be it can be using sexuality as power over the masculine. And um, I want to say not like sexuality is not a bad energy. When it's in balance, divine masculine, sacred masculine, sacred feminine sexuality is unreal. Um, when I'm talking about sexuality being used by the distorted feminine, it's a different, um, for a different purpose. It is based in fear and power. It's not based in connection. Uh, so there's a very big difference there. So again, probably another, another topic I'll cover another day, but let's see what else, um, they want to bring up here. It's so interesting. They're bringing in indecision in the reverse, and then the sun in the reverse. So what I'm feeling from this is very much this energy of, you know what, I just have to take care of the, like, I just have to take care of myself. I have to make sure I am taken care of. I'm making sure I have a roof over my head, money, um, stability, sometimes status, material wealth, um, things, you know, and they're willing to sacrifice their happiness, their true emotional fulfillment here because of this being in the distortion energy. see what else they're wanting you to know about that energy because they're bringing me back to like 1950s where it was like the the cleavers right um dad goes to work mom cooks kids go to school it's all good she but she's reliant completely upon her husband and um and there are a lot of people who will partner up because of stability and stay in stay in bad relationships because of stability and money. Um, I get clients like that all the time who are like, or, you know, kind of stuck in that place where they're scared because they feel powerless if they were to leave a very unhealthy marriage because of the money. So, um, this is why a lot of sacred feminines have moved away from that paradigm. I'm trying to be very careful with what I'm saying here. And I hope that you guys understand like 
some of these examples I give and concepts are meant to just be as examples and teaching of the energies. So let's see what else they want you to know about the distorted feminine. Yeah, they're just saying their priority is stability. And here we are getting spiritual understanding. This came in for the, the, the masculine too. You guys, by watching this, is is an example of you trying to gain spiritual understanding around this. And I, I love that that came in for both of the readings, masculine and the feminine. Um, because by understanding this, we can change it. And then we're getting passion. So like I said, a lot of... Um, people who are living in distorted feminine energy, they are not following their passions in their life. Um, I shouldn't say that. Some are, actually. Um, they may be pursuing their passions, but it's more in, it's more because they're in their masculine energy. Again, this is so interesting that this is coming in because, um, I can hear people like saying when they're watching this, like, oh, but I know, I know someone who's, you know, on this career path and she's doing whatever or he's doing whatever. And they're very passionate about it, but they're still the distorted feminine. So again, that's, but the distinction is that they are likely in their masculine energy more than they are in their feminine. If that makes sense. So it also just really... To me, it's a car. It's it's about all right. They're bringing it to me, so I'm gonna. I'm just gonna share what they're bringing. So they're bringing me to culturally what's happening, relating to sexuality and to um, the distortion of sexual connection. I, I mean, God, I can't even. I'm like trying to keep my personal thinking around this out of this, but they're giving me the example of where you can't turn on the TV or you can't turn on even the radio anymore without hearing about things like hoes and bitches and, you know, and, and females accepting that and thinking that's cool and using their sexuality as power. I mean, that's just, it's such a blatant example. And, um, kids growing up with this as their it's like it's it's programming them right it's programmed them subconsciously um to believe this is the dynamic it should be the dynamic between the masculine and the feminine you know and it's so distorted it's not even funny um like i can't even like i like to watch reality shows as my little guilty pleasure and i remember watching there's one show I was watching and it's like I can't watch a reality show with 20 somethings in it without them without them the way they dance the way that it's like this constant twerking and like grinding on the dance floor it's it's that's just an example okay um I mean <laughs> I'm so trying to hold back on this right now but that's just the example right um, it is a, it is a lack of respect for both parties involved and, um, you know, some may say, you know, lighten up, it's fun, it's not that important, but it, it's just an example of this exact paradox, this paradigm where girls are brought up to be sexual objects and they're not people. And men are being raised where the where the daughters or the girls are just conquests. And I'm not saying anything you guys don't already know, but that's I'm putting it in the context of this distortion. Okay, that is what we are breaking free of. And I love that I have so many more masculines on my channel, um, really starting to awaken to this because they're the the divine the masculine in the presence of the distorted feminine, that's really a lot of what they have seen. So a lot of the divine masculines need to break free of 
that illusion of that's what a feminine is. So, and once a, once a masculine is in the presence of a, a sacred feminine energy, now he knows the difference. So until he experiences the sacred feminine, he doesn't, it, he, he's, he's like, thinks this is what it is. So let's just get some other um, messages here on what they're wanting to us to talk about relating to the distorted feminine. What is underneath the um, distorted feminine energy in terms of like healing or what's the break here? They're not connected to their spiritual truth. They are not connected at all. We're getting answered prayer and we're getting listening. So they're not connected to their divinity. They're not connected to their heart space. They're not connected to higher self, to higher consciousness. They are completely disconnected. Um, and they're also going against their true nature. Um, everyone has the opportunity to live on the sacred end of the spectrum. And when feminine energy is distorted, masculine energy is distorted, it does go against your true nature. And people that are living in that, that are not breaking free of it, don't really get it. They don't get it. And it's keeping them from this. It's keeping them from true soulmate partnership divine partnership, sacred union. Because that's what they need to learn. They need to learn that this is their, this is where they want to go. This is where they want to be. And just like with the masculine, it's like they may not realize they're not aware of it. Oh gosh, and it keeps going. They genuinely don't accept themselves. They may pretend like they do. They may act all confident, these, these distorted feminines. But they struggle immensely with self-acceptance. That's why the behavior is what it is. That's why it shows up the way that it does. Here's truth and integrity, exactly. They're not living in integrity with their soul. Um, and again, they may act like they're all happy. They may pretend like everything's good. They don't want, you know, and, and it's not. Um, and, and a lot of this is unconscious, guys. I, I'm not, um, I want you to understand that a lot of, 85% uh, of our behavior comes from our subconscious mind. And that gets programmed up through about age seven when we're children. So these are things that are ingrained that are not necessarily like they're thinking out loud. This, this is stuff that they are disconnected from because they're not connected to their soul um, at the level that they could be. So let's just get a few more um, messages here. What else do you want to talk about relating to the distorted feminine? So the reason I wanted to do this is I wanted... Like if you're a masculine and you're learning about yourself and awakening and you're trying to understand all of this... Here's what the distort, what you likely recognizing around you, right? Um, and it's the, it's the end of the spectrum that will stay that way unless there's something that causes them to shift and to awaken and to really express their, who they are. So 
And if you're a feminine watching this and this sounds a little bit like you, don't worry. Because knowing this, you have the opportunity to change it and just to become aware of how this is not um, living to your fullest potential. Listen, listen, this is so crazy what just came out. Seven of Cups, having lots of options. Judgment. At the end of my life, how do I want to have lived my life? What am I going to regret? What do I wish I had done? What do I wish I had faced? And that's exactly the conversation we're having here. And what I just said is like, if this is you, if you are finding yourself feeling powerless, um, potentially using sexuality as... Um, some power um, if you are dr like dramatic and like addicted to drama that is the distorted side of the feminine because feminine energy is like very emotional and all over the place and the sacred feminine she still has those emotions but she keeps them in check she balances it she sees things from higher consciousness somebody who's in the distorted mass uh, feminine energy is very myopic. They're looking just at what's happening around them and like freaking out about this and this and this and oh my gosh, did you see what they did or whatever. It's very like, you know, real housewives, right? It's like they're addicted to the drama, 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 drama. And people love it because it makes for good TV, but it's not good. It's not good for life, right? I mean, it's debatable whether it makes for good TV, but you know what I'm saying. So, um, it's about taking what's innate in, in us and living from the highest expression of it. But I love that these came out. How am I living my life? I have options of what I want to choose. And how am I going to choose? What am I, what am I going to choose? And they're bringing in Ten of Cups. So when you choose, you can have this ultimate emotional fulfillment. Emotional fulfillment. Oh my God. So interesting. Because once you make this decision, it's about dropping these swords, dropping the manipulation. Unbelievable, right? Juggling in like, do I want to get to the other end of the spectrum or do I want to stay where I am at? This is about going into a new life, being at a crossroads. But when you make that decision, you drop the manipulation, you drop the secrecy, you drop the, the lies that you're telling yourself about being happy. Because spirit wants you to live in this emotional fulfillment. Not material fulfillment, emotional fulfillment. All right, guys. Well, what I'm going to do now is I am going to go and do an, uh, more in-depth on this. We're going to take a look at... Um, at if you're dealing with distorted feminine energy in your life, what does spirit want you to know about it? What's the guidance for you? Um, how does the divine masculine help with the, the feminine? How does the masculine, how can the masculine help to shift someone from distorted into the divine end of the spectrum? Uh, what their presence is meant to teach you and, you know, the guidance for you if you're dealing with the energy of distorted feminine, what spirit wants you to know about that. And then we are going to get um, some messages from the goddesses, from the sacred feminine at the end of the message too. So if you want to go more in depth with this, um, do go check out the, ex the extended video. The link is going to be down below. I hope that this has been helpful for you in understanding um, maybe where you're at, where people in your lives are at. Um, if you're a masculine and you're breaking free of the grip of the distorted feminine, bravo for being here and listening to this because hopefully it's helping you identify what that looks like and feels like. And um, hopefully also giving you some ideas about what it, um, what the sacred feminine is like. So guys, until next time, I send you so much love. If you have not checked me out on Instagram, the info is down below as well. I post over there. And until next time, guys, I send you much love. Bye.